Hey there, I'm Nev, I'm a dev, and today's kind of a different video than uh, what you're probably used to that uh, I usually upload. Today, I want to talk about AI, and I already talked about AI roughly a year ago, and it was not just about AI, it was about Next.js, about the Vercel AI SDK, and also about AI, of course. And But I didn't really deep dive deeply into AI, and now AI is kind of around for probably three years, I guess. And yeah, so today, I just want to go over where I stand, how I use AI, which AI tools I use. And yeah, so let's go. We got a Chrome instance over right here. And what you see up here in my sidebar is directly t3.chat. And t3chat is um, a very good thing. It is probably the thing that I'm using most of the time when I'm using AI nowadays, um, with the exception of when I'm studying because then I still use ChatGPT, the app, quite often on my iPad or on my phone. But most of the time, it's just T3 chat, especially when I'm coding. As you can see, I got many threads here, um, and they are like very random threads. Like sometimes they're like in <laughs> like stuff for school. Sometimes it's about automating NPM run DB push. Sometimes it's about melanin. Sometimes it's about yeah, just some school again and some M3 MacBook Pro expert settings for editing. Yeah, you can see quite random, actually. And this is a good thing. And I love T3 chat for how good it is. And you can actually go ahead and select the models you want to um, you want to use. Yeah, you can actually also select so many models down here like Claude and Llama. ChatGPT, of course, Gemini. Um, and I appreciate this thing so much that I've actually subscribed to the pro plan. They have some rate limiting. As you can see, standard uh, standard is like 72. And premium is uh, 100. My three out of 100. And this is actually fucking crazy because as you can see, I don't really use these at all. Or don't really fletch it all out. I'm probably not one of the users Theo is losing money on, which I'm quite happy about. And I mean, I, I don't need to demonstrate this. Um, you know it's fast. Let's just go ahead and run a quick query. I don't know. Um, show me how to set up Rizzle or M. Probably um, thing is the best for this. Where is it? Clock 3.7. Um, show me how to set up Grizzle or M um, with Svelte Kit. And I'm actually curious what it's um, coming up with. Okay, so we're just installing our dependencies, installing PG. Um, and we're getting an option for SQLite. Um, yeah creating a schema and a database connection, set up drizzle kit for migrations. Yeah. And then adding the scripts mm -hmm. and then the migration script. Okay. Yeah. I mean, currently it's doing all right. Um, yeah, cool. I mean, this is kind of, I didn't really dive deep into this code. I mean, it doesn't use any runes, but it doesn't really have to because it's everything uh, server side. But it, it looks it looks pretty good. And um, as you as you can see, the um, the stream came in quite quickly. And I got to say, dude, Theo, you did a great job. Really. Um, I'm a day one subscriber, actually. And yeah, because I just was so convinced, like, all of these models, such a fast app, and I was like, damn, yeah, I use this. And now I'm using it. So that's a plus. So um, as you can see, I'm still using Visual Studio Code. And this is because I'm broke. No, seriously, this is because um, I know or I, yeah, I'm aware that Windsurf exists. I'm aware that Cursor exists, but I don't really need them yet. Um, tedious tasks I do with Copilot directly integrated into my editor, which is pretty convenient and other things. Um, I just, yeah, 
open a quick T3 chat window or tab um, to do this. So I don't really see the need or didn't really see the need yet for having uh, this, for having like an AI editor. And uh, is it suggestions? Is, is the option called suggestions or completions? Yeah, here. Copilot, enable. And I've set everything to false because, yeah, while sometimes it produces good results, um, sometimes it's also really annoying. And especially when I'm checking out new technologies and I'm, I'm doing tests, I don't really see this being very, very useful. I think there's Command Shift K. No, Command Shift K deletes Command Shift L. No, it isn't anymore. Um, but yeah, I like the option that, for example, um, I don't know, stay. And then I can explain or fix this with Copilot. I mean, this is pretty useful. And also, um, this feature right here is also, I mean, edits and chat I use quite often or I used quite often. Um, they kind of help me to understand stuff. And it's just, uh, yeah, pr pretty cool. And I don't, again, Cursor and Windsurf and all of these editors, they are cool. But first of all, they cost and I don't see myself paying for them if I don't use the AI, the AI features that heavily anyway. One thing that I'm really, really hyped about though, is the thing that if we go to our um, Zenith right here and we go to our pull requests, I mean, let's, yeah, I guess, let's go to here. And it's a thing called Code Rabbit. And Code Rabbit is a thing that also I got to know or I found, I found out about uh, from a Theo video because uh, Code Rabbit they had a sponsoring on his channel, and yeah, Code Rabbit basically is a code reviewer, an AI code reviewer, and it's pretty OP, I gotta say. Um, it creates this little AI summary, new features introduced, integrated Stripe subscription support with dedicated upgrade button, empowering users to manage their subscription directly from the building page. Cool. Exactly what I did. Add the functionality to retrieve and display active subscription details on account pages. Enhancement, authentication, and role management have been refined to consistently grant access to premium features. Pretty cool. So I, I currently have two integrations running, Vercel and of course CodeRabbit. And yeah, here it just gives me a little, um, or not a little actually, uh, quite a big walkthrough of the things I changed. Yeah, all of the migration files that I deleted because I found out that Drizzlekit push actually does not really care about the migration files. It just compares the current schema to the schema that is like online, that is like in the database already. It also made these sequence diagrams, which are which are quite interesting. Um, like user browser page server. Yeah, pretty sweet, I guess. Didn't really <laughs> look at them uh, quite often, but um, yeah, they're like I said, pretty sweet. And it also writes a little poem, of course. Um, it also tells me what files it used, what um, things it did. And yeah, the cool things are that it automatically points out... Whoops, no, I didn't want to do this. Yeah, I get up sometimes it's sometimes really slow. It automatically shows us these um, things, these uh, potential issues. For example, here I didn't await it. It pointed it out, which um, is... OP because otherwise I couldn't, I, I wouldn't have catch it later on. And here um, it also gives a little bit of a kind of another walkthrough on uh, how how I could improve this code. And here I guess it's probably, yeah, it's here's also an await. Um, and I mean something like a long promotion code here probably does not say anything. No, it does not. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, Code Rabbit pretty useful. Yeah, as you can see, one of the only AI AI services that I actually use. But for this case, it's very good, and it actually knows everything about your code base. Yeah, fourteen day free, free trial. I mean, pricing. Yeah, they have a free tier. Yeah, actually, I should probably cancel my plan, my my thing, my thing plan here. Um. 
Oh no, it includes fourteen days. Yeah, because I I just received a mail today. Um, but yeah, actually, actually don't need that. For you, just works fine for me, and it probably works for you <clears throat> as well. If your repository for like your own repositories, if the Code Rabbit team sees this, um, I'm actually doing a big tutorial later this year, and if you're interested to sponsor this, um. It would be nice if you reach out on Twitter or wherever. Um, yeah, because I'm trying to get some sponsors over, and this could be really cool to have some sponsors um, on this tutorial that I'm planning. It's going to be a big kind of follow me along coding. Not really a tutorial. It's more like a, a similar fashion video like Theo did, where he basically coded this file upload app. And I want to do something similar, just build something different. But um, I was really, um, I'm really a big fan of this idea because I think um, tutorials are bad for you. You don't really learn how to code with just tutorials. You also need to see how it's done, um, and to see you also need to learn program sol uh, problem solving, of course. And I think this just does not really get delivered quite as well with tutorials only. And like watching my thought process probably helps out a lot. And so this is why I want to do this kind of big tutorial. And also, of course, if you're just a random company um, or just another company that's watching this video right now, hit me up. Um, yeah. Yeah, I still pretty much stand with my kind of opinion that I stated a, little, a year ago, roughly. I think it was about 12 years, um, 12 months ago or 11 months ago, um, that I think AI is pretty useful and it is crucially like um, very yeah useful just for just a lot of things. But it sometimes is not quite there yet, but it could be. And AGI, which is a buzzword, which I don't really like to say, could be just around the corner, right? But um, yeah, till then, we'll just have to wait um, a bit. and. Yeah, with these words, um, I hope you liked the video. If so, subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.